It says you want to move a boat from one dock on a canal to another dock that's directly across the canal. So that's the goal. Uh, the desired path is to go straight down from one dock to the other. But let's say that this canal flows with a speed of three miles per hour. But in calm water, your boat can travel using its motor at a speed of five miles per hour. The velocity of the boat can be found by the Galilean relativity formula, V equals V prime plus V frame. We want to draw a vector diagram showing the two velocity vectors, V prime and V frame, that contribute to the desired total velocity of the boat relative to Earth. So that's a lot. Uh, what it means is if you've got a bird's eye view, like it's a hummingbird that's just hovering over the situation, we want the boat to actually physically move straight down relative to that bird. Or if it's a person here standing on the bank, we want them to perceive the boat moving straight down. All right, so with that in mind, the boat is not going to end up pointing itself straight down. If it did, what would happen is it would drift for sure. It would do this. So the boat can't just try to go straight across because there will be a velocity due to the water that would carry the boat in a diagonal path. And that's not what is desired. So instead, what ends up happening is the boat has to point itself in such a way that it believes that it would be traveling at an angle. But what ends up happening, though, is that the velocity due to the water makes it so that the boat ends up traveling straight down, kind of like this, kind of like that. All right, so what we want is we want to add two vectors together. Now this can be called V prime. It's what the boat thinks it's doing. It thinks it's going to go diagonal, but it doesn't go diagonal because there's another contribution, which would be V frame, the water's motion. What ends up happening is you add them two vectors together. Now, how do we add vectors together? You can do the head to tail method. It's where you take the tail of one vector and put it on the head of the other. So if I take this vector here, V frame, and move it so that its tail is on the head of V prime, then if I connect the original starting point to the end of the second vector, that's going to be the sum of those two vectors. It's a graphical method for adding vectors. And so that is going to be called V, which is the true velocity relative to bird's eye view or a person who's standing on the bank. And in this way, we see that V prime plus V frame really does equal V. All right. Now, V prime, the length of it is going to be 5 miles per hour. So we can write that in. And we also know that V frame was 3 miles per hour. Okay, V prime is the, the speed of the boat there. V frame is the speed of the water. And now we have to, we could solve for V, how fast the boat is going to go across the water. All right, so let's give 
vector notation to each of these. So V frame is going to be 3 miles per hour. And I'm going to call that in the I direction, which is to the right. We'll say that to the right is the positive X direction. You just have to find V through Pythagorean theorem. It's a right triangle. So we would see that V prime squared is going to equal V frame squared plus V squared. See, V and V frame are like legs of the right triangle. So we know this is a 5, and V frame is a 3. So if you solve that, V is a 4. But we have to give a direction to it now. When it doesn't have the vector over its head, it's just a magnitude. It's just a size. It's going to be just positive. But when you have a vector over its head, now we're talking about we have to give directional information too. So I'm going to put negative 4 miles per hour j hat because it's down. Alright. Then v prime. Uh, how do we express that? Alright. So that one's not at a nice angle relative to my given coordinate system. So you could say 5 miles per hour and then give an angle for it. That's one option. But another way would be using its components. So what would be its components? Well, V prime, I'll put it on here, it points this way. All right, that's V prime. But it's going to have a horizontal component and a vertical component. You want to create a rectangle out of any vector that's not aligned with the X and Y directions. And let it go to the left as much as V prime goes to the left and let it go down as much as V prime goes down. And then this guy could be called V prime Y, and this one could be V prime with a subscript of X, so those are its components. If you look at the geometry here, you can see some similarities. If that's a five, then this has gotta be a three, and that's got to be a 4. But look at the directions. Your V prime will be given by negative 3 miles per hour I. So to the left, 3. And then minus 4 miles per hour J. Like that's one way to express a vector is just separate its horizontal from its vertical and just give like um, the numbers uh, with signs to tell you the direction. There's other ways to, to write that. You could use what's called component form as well. So negative 3 comma negative 4 would be one way to say the same thing. Well, let's just check that the formula holds. How can we do that? Well, I'm going to rewrite V frame in component form as well. It would be 3 comma 0. Okay, because V frame points to the right, but it doesn't point up or down. And then for V, we would have 0 comma negative 4. Anyway, there's one last question. And that is, at what standard position angle should that boat be aimed in order for 
the boat to travel along the desired path. So we know that we need this vector v prime to be the direction the boat is pointed. We even know the components of that vector. They have a length of 3 and 4. So now we want to find the standard position angle. So the way we find a standard position angle is by creating like our own reference system here that is centered at the tail of the vector in question. This is going to be the positive x direction to the right. And that would be the positive y direction uh, going up. When we measure a vector's angle, though, we often want to do it in standard position, which is counterclockwise from the positive x direction. So we want to start from the right side and then wind all the way around going counterclockwise until we hit the vector. And that angle is going to be called theta with a little st, which would be theta in standard position. Okay. So how do you find that? Well, you got to start with um, what's called a reference angle. Get the reference angle first. Reference angle is found by the tan inverse of the vector's y component over its x component. But we never care about negatives in this situation, so we just use absolute value of those. It has no usefulness when it comes to a reference angle. Because the tan inverse has a limited range of what it can output. It can't give you just any angle from 0 to 360, unfortunately. Um, it'll give you an angle from negative 90 to 90. And we just want the positive of that, which would be the reference angle. All right, so let's plug that in. Our components were 4 and 3. We want to divide the y by the x. Then we get our reference angle, which is 53.1 degrees. As you can see, that can't possibly be the standard position angle because the standard position angle is going to be between 180 and 270. But what is the reference angle really? It is the angle that your vector makes with the x-axis. That's all it is. So this is a 53. So if we just do a little bit of addition, we can find that standard position angle. Uh, the way it works is if you're in quadrant 1, the reference angle and the standard position angle are the same. If you're in quadrant 2 with your vector, you want to do 180 minus your reference angle. If you're in quadrant 3, which we are, we want to do 180 plus 53. And if you were in quadrant 4, you'd do 360 minus the reference angle. So let's do the process for quadrant 3, which would be 180 plus 53.1 gives us 233. So that is the angle that we want to aim the boat at in order for it to travel straight across.